go ahead and grab a PolyMesh 3D, drag it out on your canvas, go into edit mode. Let's open up our subtool and we'll go ahead and duplicate this and we'll hit W and we'll move it back a little bit. We'll scale it way up and you can scale with your gizmo. You can also, if you want to, go over here to deformation and then you can do a size X, Y, and Z and you can just scale it up that way as well. Or you can go into geometry, size, and you can change your XYZ size to a very, very large size. So a lot of different ways you can scale this mesh up. Generally speaking, I just use my gizmo here. Now let's say, okay, I've used this and uh, we're scaling these things up. And uh, But now what I want to do is use my move brush and maybe move both of these points at the same time or move a large selection of these points here. So if I go over here and I tap S and I make my draw size big, you're going to see it never really gets big enough for me to do that. So if I go to my move brush, B, M, V, and I go over here, I'm kind of capped out. I can't make my draw size any bigger. However, if I grab my preferences menu and I drag it over here, and we go over here to the draw menu, you're going to see we have a max brush size and a dynamic brush scale size. So if we change this max brush size over here to 5,000, now when I go out here, I can tap S and you're going to see we have a lot more leeway. So I can go all the way up to 5,000. Alternatively, you can make this 1,000 or make this whatever you'd like. And now we have a dynamic brush scale. This is a multiplier. So if I change this here to two and hit enter, now you're going to see when I go up to 1,000, it's even bigger. If I drag this up to like 4.9, you're going to see when I'm at 1,000, it's even bigger. So it's essentially taking that 1,000 maximum and giving it a multiplier. So I can still go down to 1 all the way up to 1,000, but the step between those is much larger. If you don't want to have to mess with these properties and you're just working within ZBrush, let's go ahead and change this dynamic scale back to 1 and max brush size to 1,000 like it was the default. What you can do is you can select one of these and you can go down to deformations unify. What that's going to do is move it to world zero and make it the size of a Z brush primitive. If you want both of them to follow along, you can go to deformation unify and then repeat to the other, but it's going to unify them at the base or at the world zero axis. If you want to maintain their proportional differences, what I'll do is I'll take this top one here. We're going to go merge down. So these two are now merged together. Now, if we go down here to Deformation Unify, it'll go ahead and scale it down here. If we turn on the floor, you're going to see it's smaller. And if we go in here to Append, a Cube 3D, and we go into Transparency Mode, you're going to see basically what Unify does is just put it at world zero and make it fit right within a Z brush primitive box. We'll go ahead and delete this cube here, select it and hit Delete. And there we go. Now, there's a lot of scale stuff you can do. You can go to Z Plugin, go into Scale Master, and click this little button right here. You can watch a video on Scale Master. You can see how ZBrush handles scale. If you click these right and left arrows, this will tell you the ins and outs of Scale Master and how it works and how to be a little bit more precise in ZBrush with scale. But if you're just working within ZBrush and you want your draw size to be consistent with your objects, let's say your objects get too big, you can always unify them down. And then you can split them apart, of course. We turn on Polyframe here. We can go to split two parts or split the similar split the similar parts since they're both the same vert count probably won't work but i'll do split the parts here because they're not vert welded and now these two objects are separated and much smaller so when i go to draw a size of a thousand i can go ahead and manipulate multiple points on this one like so